So hello and welcome to the first video in our how to build a ray tracer series. So I would like to talk not only about ray tracers in this video, but also about one of their main alternatives called rasterizers. So first ray tracers, they work by simulating light. So in real life you have your a light bulb. Uh, apologies for the poor drawing. Um, and light bulbs emit rays of light. And say we have a a ball here, and this ray of light bounces off the ball into your eye, and then you see it when it goes into your eye. Now ray tracers try and simulate this to some degree. But they do something a little differently. If we have the same scene with our, our light bulb and our ball, and our light bulb is nice and bright, and we are looking at it from over here, our ray tracer does this whole thing in reverse. We fire rays out of the eye, and then we bounce them until they hit a light. Now, there's a good reason for this, and that's because when this light hits the ball here, some rays will come off over here. They go in all directions, not just one. And actually, this this ray here is totally useless to us, because it does not go into the eye. We do not see it. So we don't want to spend time working out rays coming out of the light, going off all over the place, that we then don't see. It's a waste of time. So instead, in ray tracers, we fire rays out of the eye. We start with the eye. And that means every single ray affects the scene to some extent. Because we do see it. And that speeds it up by huge amounts. Now, the alternative, rasterizers, they work very differently. They draw triangles on the screen. There's no other way I can put it, really. So if this is our picture frame, and say we want to draw a ball, it will be made of triangles. So this is very crude, but here's one triangle, here's another, and another, and another. And then that is a ball. And Okay, it's a very low poly ball, but that's how they work. And they are actually much faster. We'll get on to that more later. In fact, we'll do it now. The pros and cons of ray tracers and rasterizers. So ray tracers, they are physically based. Now, why is that good? Uh, let me write this first. That means they are realistic, and in fact, they are realistic to the extent that I have seen ray-traced images that look like photos. I would not have been able to tell which was a photo and which was a fake, essentially. <laughs> That's how good these are. However, there is one big price to pay here. They're slow. Uh, they are very slow. In fact, in the industry, if it takes four hours to render an image, that is standard. Uh, now, <laughs> on the other hand, we have rasterizers. They are not physically based, which means they're less realistic. But, on the bright side, they are fast. They are very fast. In fact, rasterizers are used in games and other real-time applications because they can render over 30 pictures a second, and that means they can respond to the user's input. So they are for different scenarios. So a rasterizer uh, is useful in games. Now, a ray tracer is more useful for film, because in film, 
you're often not doing just CG. You're mixing your generated images with photos, well, I say photos, with film. And they have to blend seamlessly. And the realism you get in Ray Tracers lends itself perfectly to that. Rasterizers, not so much. Um, but they can run in real time, which makes them fantastic for games. Now, we are going to be looking at Ray Tracers in this series. That's a poor circle, let me get rid of it. Um, because we want that realism, we want it to look fantastic. Like a photo. Or at least that's what I I want. Um, so, I want to talk about one of the other benefits of ray tracers called global illumination. Now, uh, that's not a U. Uh, what is global illumination? It is for rasterizers at least a holy grail if you like but in ray tracers it's been around for years since they were first made and it's very easy to put into a ray tracer but not into a rasterizer so let me explain what it is so say we have our ball a simple ball and we have a bright light over here. So this side of the ball is in shadow, it's dark. But we have a, a second ball over here, and for this ball this side is in dark. Now, we are looking at the scene from over here, the, the dark side of it. And as we know, shadows are not completely black. But how black should that shadow actually be? Well, the reason they're not black is because when we fire a ray over here, it can bounce off onto here, and then all the way into the light. So it is being lit indirectly. Now this shadow, on the other hand, we can't bounce rays off to something else. They'll just go all over the place. So this is completely black. There is no light over here. But this shadow is not. This shadow is lit by this surface, this surface here, which is not a light. It's, but it's lighting up something else. And that's what global illumination is. Essentially, every object which receives light becomes a light source in its own right. Because you can bounce light off it. Because of this bit here, we can bounce light to indirectly light something. And if, if you want to see a very obvious example of this, if you take like your big yellow phone directory or anything else that's a bright colour, and then you take a sheet of paper and you hold it up to that really bright object, you'll notice the paper doesn't look white anymore. It will take on that yellow colour or whatever other colour it is because it's being lit by that bright yellow book, not just by the lights in the room. Um, and this is one of the most fantastic things about ray tracers. It's slow to simulate, <laughs> that is a given, but we see it all the time in real life, and we're just used to it. We're used to shadows not being totally black, and we notice when it's not there. And it makes thing pictures look fake. And ray tracers simulate this. And they look fantastic because of it. And, well, I think that will conclude our video. So, thank you for watching. Subscribe for more. Um, and I will see you in our next video. Which will be on rays. And how we show them in the computer.